So in my research group, we were quite concerned about the cost of quantum algorithms in the fully error-corrected way to simulate molecules. We know those algorithms that I described previously are going to be asymptotically the best algorithms to do chemistry. But what can you do with a quantum computer that you have at in present? At the moment, we just call them near-term quantum computers. Recently, um, our colleague uh, John Preskill from Caltech started calling them NISC, Near-Term Intermediate Scale Quantum Computers. And we are now in the so-called NISC era. So, contemporaneously to the QAOA algorithm of, of my friend also and mentor, a fantastic uh, friend, uh, Eddie Farhi, which is, his claim to fame is that he has pulled weights now that he lives in LA next to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, so that's Eddie. Eddie developed QAOA at the same time, roughly, that we were developing the variational quantum magen solver. As a matter of fact, we spoke back to back at a conference and we both were like, hmm, our algorithms are quite similar. And those two algorithms were the first hybrid quantum classical algorithms. Okay? So what exactly is a hybrid quantum classical algorithm? It's an algorithm that uses the quantum computer like a lime in a Mexican restaurant. You explore, exploit all the power of the lime for preparing a quantum state, okay? And you trade off a lot of the complexity of the algorithm by a bunch of measurements, okay? So in other words, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna calculate, you're gonna be preparing quantum states, and then you're gonna be measuring them, and preparing and measuring them. So you might say, okay, so what's the point? Well, the point is that you can actually take a lot of operations that are very hard to do on a classical, on a quantum computer, and dump them into a classical computer, such as optimization, and such as um, addition, division, etc. So these arithmetic operations require a lot of gates that now you can actually offload to the classical computer that is controlling the quantum computer as if it was, say, an accelerator or an auxiliary system, if you think about it as a GPU or something like that. Okay. So the way it works is the following. First, you're going to define a quantum circuit that I like to call it a stencil. This is a quantum circuit that has a certain shape. And each one of these elements here, one or two qubit gates or multi-qubit gates, we have one or more parameters. Let's say each one of them has one parameter. Usually they have more than, more than one, right? And these parameters, I like to call them little lambdas, right? Are little parameters that together form a parameter vector. And what, not, what did I use? I use m, okay, for the number of parameters. So I have m parameters, okay, that at the beginning I might set up with a classical guess, I might set them up randomly, and I prepare a quantum state, and I measure, and in my case I'm simulating molecules, so what do I measure? I've been talking about it in the last lectures. I measure the energy of the molecule, and therefore I measure the Hamiltonian. Okay, so what I do is I take a molecule, measure the Hamiltonian, okay, and then go to a classical computer, okay, and then figure out what is the energy of that Hamiltonian, and then I use the variational principle, which I will describe in the next slide in more detail, to actually change the parameters of the, in such a way that the energy of the Hamiltonian is lowered, okay? Again, we'll go into the mathematical details of the variational principle, but at the moment I wanted to give you the, the, the big picture of how all these hybrid quantum classical algorithms work. You prepare a quantum state, that's the first phase, okay? Then you measure. And then you're gonna update the parameters. This big lambda is the parameter vector lambda that determines all the parameters to the wave function. And once you update the parameters, you fit them back in, right? So if you started with, say, lambda zero, the first iteration, this guy is gonna go around and give you lambda one, which is gonna be a better iteration. And then after that, lambda two and lambda three and lambda four, and you continue optimizing. Not dissimilar, of course, to the way neural networks are trained and all their machine learning tasks. 
So not surprisingly, this family of hybrid quantum classical algorithms look a lot like the original variational quantum eigensolver and include people that have done quantum classifiers and so on. And because I don't want to offend anybody, I want to tell you some of the algorithms we have developed. Of course, there's tons of other algorithms, but so some of the ones that we have done, for example, is one for error correction, the, correction, the quantum variational error corrector, and two machine learning quantum algorithms, the variational quantum autoencoder and the variational quantum generator, okay? That we actually uh, took out and posted in the archive in 2016 and 2019. And to these ones, I give the, uh, the credit to, uh, to my student, uh, Jonathan Romero, and also together with Johnny Olson. Uh, but Jonathan Romero has been involved in these two uh, algorithms, okay? So this is kind of part of his PhD, and we're very excited about them because they are machine learning algorithms that you might want to learn more about. They're exactly in the same family of algorithms, okay? So what is key about this is the fact that this classical computer needs classical optimization algorithms. A frontier of this field is how do we know that as m grows, where m, as you know, is the number of parameters, the classical algorithm is going to actually find the best parameters for the quantum circuit. It's a very interesting paper by Gerald McLean at Google. Another one of my former students, I love to say that, but he's amazing, this guy. Okay? Uh, that uh, with, with Ryan and others, uh, Ryan Babush, has explored this problem of what happens when this M grows and then can we really still prepare quantum states? And they argue that perhaps you really need to have a good classical guess to be able to do this for large M. So there's many open questions in these hybrid quantum classical algorithms that I think are very current and are a key part of the course uh, that Peter put together because they, these are key questions for the usability of near-term quantum computers. So in the next slide, I'm going to move on and tell you how we use in particular the variational principle to do this in a little bit more detail.